thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, I have to warn everybody. Uh, I'm about to, to, you know, say my piece here, and I should tell you that Radinoviches are, are well known for uh, being emotional. And um, when we're under attack, uh, I, th I think we have a, a tendency to become stoic and resolute. But if you add a little bit of love uh, to to our gatherings and to our hearts, um, we're likely to turn into a puddle. And today, my heart is beating out of my chest um, because I think it's at maximum capacity. Uh, my cup runneth over today. I'm so thankful to have uh, been here today to hear this testimony. I think it's true uh, what everybody said, that there are good men and women on either side of this issue. And they each approach it through the lens of their own experiences. And I today wanted to share the experience by which I approach this issue. Uh, when I was 17 years old, my mother was taken from me. Um, I really struggled. I, I had a, a great deal of difficulty. But I had a strong family. I had brothers and stepsisters and uh, dad and step-parents, and I had cousins, and I had best friends who were as close as brothers. And I also had one friend and mentor who went out of his way to care for me, to make sure that um, my emotional needs were, were tended to, to you know, do very small and nice things uh, to help me through that situation. And I went on, and for the next couple of years it was difficult, but I got my life uh, where I wanted it to be. I'm obviously happy to be here today. But uh, about a year ago, when I, or a year and a half ago, when I was thinking about running for this office, I had sat down with this friend of mine, and I hadn't connected with him in a few years. And he said to me, Joe, I'm gay. And, uh, you know, I didn't really even think much of it. I, it was fine with me. I didn't, you know, I've got plenty of gay friends. But when I was going home that day, I was in my car, and I actually had to stop and pull over because it hit me that through all of the difficult things that I had been through, where he was there for me, for 35 years, as someone who was in, in the closet, through all of his difficulties, he didn't have that same support for him. He didn't have that big loving family. And in a small town, he had to be worried that coming out would possibly cost him his job or worse. And I know that might sound strange to people who don't come from small towns, but just today in an NPR story uh, about this issue and about my vote on it, a gentleman from one of my towns, and I assure you that my towns are full of good people, but a gentleman from one of my towns said that he believed that all gay people should be rounded up and shot. And so that threat of coming out in a small town is real. And so today, I stand in appreciation of the work that Representative Clark has done. I stand in great appreciation of all the conversations we've had, we've had as colleagues over the course of this debate. And I just want to say that for me, this is a vote for freedom and equality. This is a vote for, all, for the rights of all of my constituents. This is a vote in the truest hope that every Minnesotan will someday be able to have a family like mine, a family that's there for them through thick and thin, uh, a family that uh, cries when they feel so much love in the room, that stands resolute when they face adversity. And this, for all of us, I hope, is a vote on the long march to fulfilling a promise in this country that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, that chief amongst them is the right to liberty, to life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Members, I'm proud to stay, say that I'll be a green vote on the board, and I sure hope that the rest of you will as well. Thank you.